Cool music today. Yo, I don't know why. Summer officially started. I think it started like a month ago. Uh, for us, it started like three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> what up, everybody? There was no plan to do a summer theme thing until five minutes ago, Literally. and I said, "I'm grabbing my drink." He just showed up into the room like that. Yeah. And goes, "You should get some luau music." I'm like, <laughs> 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 "Thanks for the." What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Hope you have your drinks. We're going to have a fun stream. We have an awesome show. 
Yes, we do. Once in a while, we have an awesome show. Once in a while. Okay, most of the time, we kind of just skirt by. But this time, <laughs> you're getting your money's worth. And what did you pay? Nothing. Zero ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. But you're getting a lot more value than that because we have special supreme guest, Tom Whalen. Top quality. Top 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 shelf. Audience, I High said. Quality. I said we have special guest. Oh shit! Sorry. Tom <laughs> Whalen. Wait, is it working? I can barely hear it. Oh no! There we there go. You go. <laughs> I queued up more music <laughs> as if we need more. Awesome, Tom Whalen is going to be with us. Uh, and man, we have to talk to him because he just had a kick ass release of Godzilla vs. Mothra with Mondo sold out in milliseconds. There are some conspiracy theories abound, and we're going to discuss those right off the bat. We're not going to let them off easy tonight on the show. This is a hard hitting show. It is. We ask the hard questions, and we get the hard answers. We get the hard answers, okay? <laughs> And uh, I'm convinced nobody at Skybump's watching this because they would fire me already. Why am I allowed to do any of this? And then after after we exhaust Tom with our nonsense, okay, then we are going to re uh, release, print and release a brand new set of one of one prints based off this design right here, my hammerhead shark design. I had teased it in previous streams, but we're going to actually make them available. Only 10 of this guy. Only 10 of this guy. And so it is going to be a jam-packed stream. Let's say hi to everybody in this chat, yes, and then we'll bring in our today. special oh. guest. We hold have on, hold on. Hmm? Stop. Our audio is super low. No. That's amazing. Hold on. We're going to fix it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'll redo the entire keep talking, intro. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. All right, let us know if that's better in the chat, everybody. That's better. I mean, that's better. I think that should have fixed it. Sorry, guys. This is a lot of stuff. 30 second, long 30 30 second recap. Summer stream, no reason for a summer stream other than I just wanted to wear this shirt and drink my drink. Tom Whalen on the show. Tom's way too awesome to waste his time with us, but he's <laughs> doing it anyway, and we love him for it. We're going to ask him the hard-hitting questions. Skybound should fire me for doing this kind of programming, but they don't because they're wonderful people. We're going to release a brand-new one-of-one variant print of the Hammerhead Shark print. So all of that is what I said in a much more condensed way. Yeah, hello okay. again. Hello again. We're okay. sorry for audio issues. It's okay. been happening throughout. Shout out a Omnibusters. Raph is yes. in the house. Albuquerque, 98. Dave Robertson, what up? Geo 139 Daniel Narain, uh, Colt. Mm -hmm. John Colt. Garcia, Dave Martin, Eros, Brad Lutz, Dr. Wolf, Astronaut. Astronaut's a funny name. And like uh, Chelsea, I see you guys. Mark K, what up, everybody? everybody? Eric Chanez, Viper, one, two, three, eight, three. Okay, thank you, guys. And feel free to drop any questions in the uh, chat. Yes, please drop questions for Senor Tom Whalen yes. and also for Peter because yeah. you might, at uh, this point, you this might have some questions. Yeah. I don't know what. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, good. Let's get, let's... Bring him in. What did I say I was going to do first? I don't remember. Okay, I think... I think I want to do a quick update. Do you have the store? I do have the store. Okay, up. you guys, just so you know, we always talk about like some of the merch. I'm going to just real quick, and then we'll bring Tom in. Yeah. Um, we always talk about the merch that we release. I got a big basket of merch to check out. Oh, first of all, I'm wearing this one. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me get oh, back. Oh, well, if I do, if I do the um, merch right now, you're going to see Tom. Oh, and don't, that would don't, show it, don't show it. Yeah, don't show it. Okay. Don't show Tom yet. We can do okay, merch later. Okay, I'll show it, but I just want to show you guys. Because you, you, know, you know where yeah, the store you is. Know. But here's the Gola Curie one. Just came in. It's got the front head design. Show them the back. Got the full Woo! print in orange and black on the back. I freaking love this That's shirt. That's sexy. I'm going to have to get a backup of this one. It's really good. Did I get one of those? I think you did. Man, I need one if I didn't. We got, I finally got, oh, here's the black and white version. Some people prefer the, especially in the summer when it's hot, <laughs> white shirts. It's the same uh, format, but it's got the head in black on the front over the heart. Then it's got... The design big on the back, Gold Akiri. So I good. Love that guy. Hey, Eric Vetter in the chat wants to know, how did you light your display? Because you do have a really interesting lighting scheme behind, behind you. Behind me? Yeah. That's one LED strip from Philips. Yeah. 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 The month of monster shirts. I got the uh, salty sea devil. I freaking these shirts are really good, Those you guys. Those shirts are awesome. I, it's good to see them in person because then you get an idea. Yeah. I got an, I got that one. I also got the mummy here. The mummy design. It's God, big I on the back. That one, man. Month of Monsters in the front. Love it. These are all good ones. I, you know, you've seen me wear the Daruma long sleeve before. They have a short sleeve version too, but there's a long sleeve. There's a little sticker on it. Don't mind that. That one mine? It's yeah, so this small. is yours. Oh, okay. This is yours. It's Gabby's. Yes, finally. Then uh, the Wolfman. 
A rich, awaken you wretched werewolf, not yes. the wolf man. Please don't sue. Right there. Boom. I want you guys to know that these were delivered to us via t-shirt cannon. T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the UPS guy just stood in front of our house and Boom. shot them at us with the t-shirt cannon. The dragon, the dragon head we did last year. Well, I like year. that in black and white. Yeah, it looks good it's in black and white. Awesome. It's a nice big design in the front. Mm -hmm. People who prefer the front designs. Mm -hmm. They also have it in on a white shirt with an orange design, and they have a black one just like this, too. So if you like and the, the blue. orange. And a blue one, yeah. The light blue one. A lot of color variants. Okay. And then, of course, there's okay. hats. I finally got this hat. I've been meaning to request That's it. That's the, the boar? That's the, nice. the war hog on the, like, the trucker hat with yes. the white mesh and the navy blue front. This one's really rad. It's like a super pro-looking hat. It's really cool. And then I'm wearing the Daruma hat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that focuses. Uh, yep, there it is. There it is. Is it it's distressed like a on purpose? Distressed on purposed biker hat. Oh my god, the illusion's failing away. All right. Are you gonna wear those glasses the entire, entire time? No, 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 I won't do that. Okay, so let us bring <laughs> in now that we did a quick store update. So store.skybound.com. Look for the attack Peter shop section or bit.ly slash attack Peter merch. We'll put that link in the chat at some point. But while we do that, let's not bury the lead. Let's bring in our esteemed guest, Mr. Tom. Quote, he, he gave me this to read here. Tom, quote, <laughs> unquote, Tiger Man, Waylon. I don't know what that means. He just DM'd me that real quick. So please refer to me as Tiger Man. Tom, okay. you can go ahead and unmute yourself now. He's been waiting in the background so very patiently, patiently with, with muted on. And here we go. We'll bring him in right now. Ready, Mutic everybody? Prepare Where yourselves. Tom Waylon. Uh -oh. Where is he? Where did he go? <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, no, I gotta hold find on, him. <laughs> oh no, we lost him. Oh, hold Tom. on, everybody. Hold on, everybody. Keep just just hold on. Everybody say Tom. 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 What Tom. happened? back everybody check 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 check, check 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 audio levels again okay we should be back i hear it i think we're back tell me if we're back tell me if we're back tell let me if we're know, back everybody not a word back. to be heard not a word to be heard sorry this is this is one of those streams it's <laughs> it's gonna be a yeah we're back. we're back we're back we're back we're back okay cool all right so what i was saying is tom pretend i didn't say anything until now hey tom whalen what hey, up hey yay tom whalen wait wait i'm a wreck right now no. yeah you <laughs> Your name's on, my name is on this shit, dude. This that's is true. That's true. We bury this episode. Yeah, no, I like it. So I this, this is how you set expectations because now we we were doing real good early last year and shitting on every stream. Like every stream would crash. Everything was a nightmare. And we were okay with it. And it we was were okay like with part it. Of the appeal. Yeah, and then we got good at it, and that was our mistake because now people expect us to be good at it. So when Something goes wrong. They're like, wait, what? You know, I'm like, no, this is what we do. We fuck it up. And so um, this yes. is too powerful of a collaboration for the Internet to be OK. Any yeah. other artist out there who started their own, you know, YouTube show, let's say let's say Florian Burtmer decided to start a YouTube show. He would build up the hype and then you would be there. And I'm just like, don't do that. Everybody's going to do the same thing. Crash the stream. <laughs> right. Then we'll see who's left. And now we know who really wants to be here. So thank you all to here. We got 52 people hanging out watching us. That's amazing. Um, Tom, thanks, dude. You for having me again it's good to good to uh, when are you guys gonna fly me down there and oh my so god actually, leave so right now actually meet each other in person this is crazy that's what i was just uh th saying to myself uh earlier today it's funny because you know i, I feel like i really hit it off with you as a friend and I, and I love talking to you i've learned so much from you and i always tell the story that when i did the first release of mondo prince i didn't know what i was getting myself into and so they sold out and when it came time for me to sell my ap's they sold out super fast 
And then I had to like print and ship each one. I had never shipped 150. I mean, I decided to put them all up at once. Super rookie move. And then I had to ship all 150 of them. And naturally like 15, 20 of them got crushed or stolen or whatever it was. And people were shitting on me rightfully so on the on the Facebook groups like what the hell who packs like I'm like oh crap and (laughs) and you reached out you know unsolicited and said dude let me show you what I do it works super well and I'm like oh thank god and so I had that uh somebody watching over me when I was just starting out so I always I always remember that kind of like chaos of the first couple drops so I I wanted to pay that forward I appreciate it man And and I feel like you know on you know you you guys listening might think otherwise, but the reality is like a lot of artists are real nightmares and, um, you know, <laughs> people in this industry are real eccentric and difficult sometimes. Not everybody. There are a few people who aren't. And when you meet the ones who aren't, you're like, Oh, thank God. It's like water in the desert because it's hard to be somebody, you know, fairly reasonable and friendly and find out that a lot of people take advantage of that kind of thing and, and don't reciprocate. And so when you meet someone that you feel, you have a good connection with it is very very welcome so dude let's get right to the point okay people are talking in the facebook groups and they're saying tom whalen print sold out in seconds this means he probably is the one running the bots that you got really good at bots you're not out in public very often you don't talk online a lot so people think that you're behind the scenes learning how to run bots Bought all yep. your own prints, and now you're going to drop them little by little on eBay one at a time. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. There's, okay. an, there's an app that just came out called BotGrab that I've been experimenting with, and it worked really well yesterday. So, uh, Well, there you fucking have it, everybody. Confirmed. Cool. Go Sn- with that. Clip that out. Clip that out. Put it on Instagram right now, please. All right, so right. clip that out. Bots come up every time, like literally every time something sells out. Amazing. Tom Boss. You guys, from now on, just don't call them bots. Call them Toms. And, uh, <laughs> for everyone, not just for me. No, exactly. Yeah, you have the, like a sub mondo. Um, yeah. Amazing, dude. Well, in all seriousness, man, congrats on that print. It is so gorgeous. Um, I, I I hesitated with trying to grab one on my own because I have your I have your Astro Monster framed up, and I love it so much. I'm like, ooh, it'd be good to get that one as a set. And I might reach out. I might reach out directly to Mondo and Flex. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Like I'm not. I don't wait. I go, hey guys, listen. Cancel someone's order and bring send it over to me, please. And send it over, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's beautiful, man. Congrats on that. As we as we hang out tonight, I have a question Tell that me. people want to answer in the chat. Oh um, yeah. Is it driving people crazy that I keep switching formats on this series? Like keep going from landscape to portrait? Or oh, it's a good question. So I always I always probably overthink that, or I used to overthink that. But now I kind of just do whatever the artwork dictates. But uh, I'm curious to see what people think. Because I know that series is pretty mixed up now between landscape and portrait. And you've done what? Is this your fourth one in the series? Um, I think it's my sixth. No shit. I, I did the original Godzilla okay. in 2015. Okay. And then Terror of Mechagodzilla, uh, Mothra, Astro Monster. And, and, um, and um, Megalon. Yeah, so, okay, fifth, fifth. Wait, that that wasn't six? That was five, I think. That was five? Okay. You got you to gotta keep up, dude. We got to have enough to do a uh, reflection show. <laughs> well, hey, that doesn't mean I'm done. Let's put no, it of course not. Well, I, I'm saying I have six, you have five. Do one more, then I'll do another one. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's a good question because I think about that too. In fact, when I s- designed the first three Godzilla prints, you know, for Mondo, they were all um, vertical, and I said, oh, I would love to do a horizontal for this next piece. But I thought, ah, you know, what if, like, what if I keep doing them? And then it would be cool to, like, put them in a book at some point with that horizontal one, you know, burn my ass. But I kind of want to do a horizontal one, so I might do one. Fuck it. Yep, do it. Break it. I'm going to do it. Break the mold. And, uh, but, yeah, it's a fantastic piece. And it's funny because uh, when it came out, as soon as they announced it, I'm like, and then, they, and then they announced it side by side with the Mothra statue, which was gorgeous. Shout out Hector Ars and that whole team over there killing it. And uh, I said, man, it would have been so cool if they let if they had Tom do the box art. And then I saw right <laughs> after that, they announced it. I didn't know that. It was gorgeous, man. Can we show that? I think we have it. Um, it was, uh, I'm just as pumped about that as I am about the poster. So and, cool. Uh, yeah, that I'm, I can't wait to get those in hand. So this is the, this is the, you can put a little music, B. It's nice for vibes a little bit. Just a little chill. This is Tom's playlist he sent us. 
Um, yeah, so this okay. is, by the way, this is, so this is the sketch. This is what Tom considers a sketch. So for people like me, you know, I realize that when I send sketches to Mondo, they're like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> they get a sketch <laughs> like this. And then imagine Toho, they go, yeah, this is, you can sell this as is if you wanted to. <laughs> And then they get mine, and it literally looks like someone had a stroke on the on the <laughs> iPad. I can't believe it. I would have. I'm so glad I didn't know that you submit stuff like this for approval before I submitted mine, or else I never would have submitted it. I would never have had any of these pieces. But this is gorgeous as is. Part of that is I hate surprises throughout the design process. I like to get all the the BS out of the way up front. So if I feel like if if a client sees this and they're okay with it, they're gonna be fine with the final, and I can kind of relax and just do my thing. But if there's too many well, this will be here and this will be here and this will be here. I feel like I haven't, like I didn't cover all my bases for me. That, that, that just, I, I like to have all that stuff nailed down going it, into the final. It makes sense. And it must be like much more enjoyable that way that you know that you, everything is improved. And so anything that you do to it to like add detail is only going to make it more solid of what you presented. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. It's funny. I have the opposite experience where I, I figure let me turn in this chicken scratch and I can pretty much do whatever I want because they're going to, what are they going to remember the exact scribble that I submit? <laughs> I wish, can we, I, I wish we had uh, a side by side. I don't have it handy, but just to put yeah, it. Who even knows? It's disgusting. A just lot of people in the chat are like losing their minds that this is a sketch. Exactly. And I had no idea this was a sketch either. I know. When you sent it, I was like, oh, cool. Look, there's the poster. Yeah, I didn't know it was a, a Shout out. We got some cool folks, some friends in the chat. Uh, Kaiju Live, AJ Russo, and Kyle from Collect All Monsters. Um, yeah, th th that's what I'm talking about, you guys. This is a sketch. So it's awesome because, I don't know. And it's funny because I'm really attracted to your work and it looks nothing like the way I work. It's funny. So like, I, I always wonder about that. Are you... Do you find that you're a fan of work that that's like stylistically similar to your work as much as you are stuff as that's very, very different? Do you think about stuff like that? I do. And it's funny because I saw I saw one of your sketches one time. Mm. I think it was a Mondo stream. And mm. I was like it, that that bothered me as much as this bothers you because no, it doesn't bother me, though. I'm happy. No, no, no. I don't, yeah. don't want to say bothers. Okay. It, it was like I was as jealous of that oh. <laughs> uh, because, you, because I because I know that's all coming from everything is built in your head yeah and i the, the fact that you do this like almost without a net when you're when you're on the linoleum um is is mind-boggling it's me. scary dude look i'm gonna show you yeah people. i imagine so, because I, I i'm so addicted to the to command z that i, oh I don't know God. how you how you work i just had i just had i'm carving something right now and i just had a moment where i'm like oh my god how do i command z this shit right now and yeah. what yeah. i mean to be honest with you what it has taught me for by force not because it's like some wisdom is that nothing that i had in mind was that amazing to begin with that it can't morph over time and as long as the general vibe of the piece is there i never really get what i want in any of my pieces which is funny like or not what i want i never really get what i set out to achieve yeah okay but you're you, you can get to a result that you're happy with. yeah because uh, it takes a lot of him freaking the fuck out first. yeah well that's <laughs> yes and I'm glad like I walked in. I walked in about an hour after he made the whatever move that he's talking about. Yeah. And he was just dripping sweat. He was on the floor rocking himself back and no, forth. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. Figuratively, yes. No, he he wasn't, but but he definitely looked very Cause you have concerned. To you know um, what it is? It's, it's not like, upset, it's concerned. No, it's like, Tom, it's like if you're driving somewhere and you go the wrong way for like yep. 50 miles and then I you're like... like Right. Yeah, yeah, is it better to go backwards? Is it better to hang a right? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, should I cut across? Yeah. And that's the problem is like, so now I'm, I'm always in the design phase all the way through. The truth is though, is like sometimes, and I, I'm sure you've had an experience similar to this, is like the pieces that you think you did, you missed the mark on really surprise you with the reaction from the crowd. Like people really dig those. And some of the pieces that perhaps you, man, you were like, man, this is it. Got it exactly where I wanted. Yep. Those those don't get the response you want sometimes, and and maybe I don't know that that's um, similar to you because you have the ability to kind of morph things until you're happy with them. But it is something that I've that I've noticed. Just just stop getting at in the way. Just keep going. Yeah, I agree. I, that, I've had that feeling many times. Almost every project where I uh, I don't like to walk away from the from the from a project, even like for the day, if it's not in a good spot. Yeah. And if I get close to the end of the day, I, I get a little less adventurous. So I can <laughs> yes. so I can know I can bring it in for a soft landing before I have to 
hang it up for the day. That's exactly what goes through my mind. It's funny because these are thoughts you have in isolation and you are, and for me at least, it's, it's part of why I like to do this and have someone like you here talking is because I need confirmation that other people suffer the same way that I do. And it's nice to yeah. hear it. And it's it, nice to hear other people. Yeah. Simultaneously, what if you su are towards the end of your day and you hit something really fucking awesome? You're like, oh, here we go. Do you keep going or do you want to keep going? Uh -huh. It's hard to keep going yeah. because I I try to cut off at a certain time of day and spend time with the kids. Yeah, like of course. In the afternoons, especially especially during school time. Yeah. Um, and give sense. give my wife uh, like come in as a relief pitcher for my wife uh, during school days. Yeah. But um, there are t plenty of times when I I'll, I'll get to a point where I'm comfortable with stop and then come back at night and then just keep going into the night because totally I know I just want to keep like keep the thought going yeah you're like on to something I, I totally get it and I, and I also think it's important to practice that I go late often and and, and I, yeah, but I we don't have kids we yeah don't, like you can keep working and I don't care I'm like yeah Gabby doesn't really care but I still feel like I don't want to do that I don't want to normalize the fact that well that's an, that's sometimes this. it's important to yeah. tell him like hey it's nine o'clock like, yeah are you gonna keep going <laughs> right <laughs> it's right. just the reminder super... Yeah, to lose track of time like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I like to end every night with at least three hours hanging out with Gabby before we go to sleep. You know, at least. And That sounds so gratuitous when you say it that way. At least <laughs> 16 hours. <right>? At least <laughs> the entire day. No, but three hours really is just like a movie and 1.5 hours of those three hours are really Peter falling in and out of sleep and me being like, hey, you, <laughs> you missed the movie that you asked me to put on for yeah, you. Yeah, well, it's just <laughs> sitting next to each other is special. So, but it is important. I, I can't remember who the artist was. I want to say it was Rob Liefeld or not Rob, or, or um, Eric Larson or one of these 90s comics guys that, that said, if you spend, or maybe it was Jeff Darrow. I can't remember who it was. Somebody cool, trust me. They said, if you spend eight hours in your work day, you know, working on an illustration or a project, it'll take you eight hours a day until you finish. If you spend 16 hours a day, it'll take you 16 hours a day. In other words, it'll take you as long as you put into it. But if you limit yourself and discipline yourself, you yep. will still accomplish what you need to accomplish. You'll just, your workflow, your work ethic will modify. And that is true. My, my drawing style has changed because of when I'm carving something, I'm like, you don't need to do three little lines here on this muscle tissue. It's one big line. Boom. Go next. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And there's, there's so many details that I put in that I'm like, I wonder if anyone ever sees this. I wonder if anyone ever notices it or if I took a shortcut on this, would it even matter? Like, right. but then I think about if, if, if it's a run of 300 posters or 500 with an, with a variant, I think about all those people that have that hanging or in a flat file as part of their collection and mm -hmm. I think somebody's going to notice it and cumulatively it's worth putting the time in because even even on a detail level if if it just has a little bit more depth and detail to it it's going to it's going to probably it, it's like the spices in a soup you know you don't see them and you don't taste them specifically but they add to the whole I can't I'm so happy you said that because and, and and that's exactly something that I think about all the time. I think about who is like the harshest critic, even just people in the Facebook groups or people in the comments on Instagram. I think I'm like, I, I try to picture somebody specifically who's going to get this print. And I say like, yeah. I want this person to open it up and go, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. I want it to reward repeat viewing like your print, you know, with Astro Monster. I, I find things about it all the time that I'm interested in and that I think about and I you know, get in, ex excited by, and you can't do that with your own work. Sometimes you're, you're too familiar with every mark, but in exactly. other people's work, it's really appreciated. And speaking of those details, I noticed in this sketch specifically that you originally had Godzilla facing the same direction as his, his body, but the final one, I think we have the next slide. Um, that was the box. Right, we'll come back to this one. Go back, go to the next one. Oh, we have to get his actual image. Go, go uh, pull it up on the browser. Just put Mondo, Tom Whalen, uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra will pull it up. In the final one, um, you have him facing the other direction, so you kind of like turned it. Yeah, it felt too static to me to have him standing in that pose. It just, it um, that head turn kind of just gave it a little bit more dynamicism at the bottom. Yeah, there it is. Can we make that bigger in any way? <laughs> we didn't do our homework right. 
<laughs> but here it is. So yeah, so yeah, just so people can see, um, you can see that the head is turned, and it does. It kind of like changes the energy. You get a sense that he just moved. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Feels like he's actually in a battle. Dude, I love the colors on this one so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super proud. Of, I, I always feel like, and I, I feel like such a, such a fraud sometimes. I what? love the Japanese type. I, I have, I Mondo is great because they have uh, somebody who proofreads everything. Oh my god, we're so lucky. I, I know, and I can't like manage all that type. There's so many little rules, and uh, but I love the end, the end result of having Japanese type on posters. Me too, dude. You know, it's funny because I, I like it as an aesthetic, just as an aesthetic. Yeah. You know, and and I don't, and I know I don't know Japanese. I've tried to learn a little bit, especially when we went to Japan a couple of years ago. I tried to learn little things, and you know, the other weird thing is for me, I learn it in reverse because I'm always carving it backwards. So right. I don't really ever learn it, but you know, the, the, like Gojira looks wrong to me there. It's so, so weird. You know what I mean? But, uh, the yep. point is yep. I just like how it looks, dude. And that's testament to like when we were, um, growing up watching like Blade Runner, there's so much like Blade Runner has a lot of Japanese text in it and none of us necessarily understand what it means, but we associate it with like the cyberpunk thing and yeah. it looks awesome. You know what I mean? And, and I feel the same way. And yeah. like, that's why I said I feel like a fraud because I don't, I, I have no connection to the actual language, but it just, it's beautiful to look at and it, design. It really is like those like assertive strokes, every figure and yep. character. But you know what's funny? So much of the aesthetic that I put into my own design work when I'm creating something that's original is borrowing a ton from like um, Thai demons, Thai artwork. And, you know, I visited Thailand. I hung out there for a couple of weeks, but I'm not like some, you know, historian. And do I know every bit of, I just like the aesthetic, but I don't, I don't apologize for any of that because when we were in Japan, they love everything American English, you know, yeah. and I wonder uh, if it works that way. I, I've always wondered if it works. It is. Way. Well, when we were there, like the youth, like cool culture, like when you walked into their version of like an urban outfitters or whatever it is, they have tons of like random um, pictures of like nineties. Um, um, uh, what, what am I thinking of? Like, like full house. Like they'll have like the Olsen twins <laughs> from full house. And then it'll have English text underneath. Like, like where's your God now or something like that. You know, like, <laughs> it, it doesn't even make sense, but it's cool. Like, and I, and I, and to them, I get it. You know, it's foreign, it's different. It's juxtaposition. It's aesthetically alien and right, it's attractive. Right. And, and so I don't apologize for it. I like it. I try not to include stuff that I don't have somebody proofread anymore because that feels bad to do. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I used to just copy it off old posters, like like character for character. But then even the spacing would make would ruin it. Yeah. Having said that, I when I was at um, Designer Con 2019, I had my booth, and M, do you? So I know you collect Godzilla toys and yeah. like like Sofubi. Do you get any Sofubi stuff? Uh, I don't have a whole lot, but I do appreciate. So there's one artist designer named M. Who goes uh, goes by M1 M1 Toy. Yep. Okay. So he walked into my booth, and super nice guy doesn't speak much English. I don't speak any Japanese, but we kind of understood each other. He was appreciating my work, but he kind of got it through to me that I should stop using Japanese text in my <laughs> posters. And I and in one situ in, in one hand I was like kind of embarrassed like did i fuck something up did i disrespect something and on the other hand i was like fuck you m1 like who are you to come in <laughs> which is rude i don't mean that like but it's almost like okay i didn't go into your booth tell you shit but i appreciated i think what i tried to take away from it because he seemed like a really nice guy was dude if you're doing this to make yourself feel like the poster is better with it you don't have to it's already cool Right. I, I try to take that away from it. Hopefully that's what he meant. Um, but he's a super nice guy. Anyway, but the point is, yeah, we like the text, dude. I don't know what it is, but it looks awesome, dude. And it, it feels great on these posters for sure. And I love, Yeah, I love that we have the variant set up as basically a text and color color swap on this series. So it, Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't decide even which one I prefer, like, but I think it's this one. Just I love the colors. I'm always partial to the Japanese text. I love how you – because – Whenever we do, like, I'm sure, you know, when you're doing these Godzilla versus so-and-so, you know, you it's like a it's like a question. Is it, It's a Godzilla movie. Should Godzilla be the star of the art? Right. You know? Right. And that's how I've been picking these. I, I've been picking them for the monsters. I want to I wanna get, I want to hit all the major monsters. So mm. it's not like I'm picking it for the quality of the film or the, uh, it's, it's place in the canon. I just kind of want to 
hit the main monster. So I don't want to just keep doing a huge Godzilla every time. Of course not. So I'm, I'm kind of almost trying to feature the, the side characters more. But it's a great way to do both on this one because Godzilla is still front and center. It's almost like a second scene happening below where he's the star of the bottom half of the poster. Right, and then... Right. And uh, Mothra up top is like the first thing you see. So it's fantastic. dude. Now, you said you want to hit all the major monsters. I would assume then that the next piece you're going to do is Godzilla versus Ibira, the greatest. <laughs> hey, I'm game for that. I, I, I wouldn't say next, but... Uh, okay, okay. We're going to hold them to that. Down the road, yeah. We're going to hold them to that. You heard it first. So go back a slide now, B, if you can, to the um, box art. Now, what's awesome about this box art, so if you guys are watching and you're like a kaiju enthusiast, and I know that there's real kaiju experts in the chat so forgive me if i screw anything up but i think i'm right on this the poster we just looked at is showa era godzilla versus mothra 1964 yep. and for people who don't know showa is the is i didn't know this by the way until last year when you hear like showa godzilla films or heisei godzilla films those terms refer to the emperor in japan at the time um who was like like the like emperor? I think I got that right. Correct me if I'm if I'm wrong in the chat. But no, it's, that's I've, that's my knowledge. Yeah, my knowledge. that's correct. Which is crazy. Like, I never thought of that. I thought it was like maybe the studio change name, something like that. It's funny. Like like that's a cool uh, factoid. But the point is, you did a Showa Godzilla vs Mothra for the poster, and now this piece is Heisei era Mothra. No, this no? is actually uh, Millennium era. Oh, this is oh it's Tokyo SOS. Oh um, shit. Yeah, and I I used the if you have the sketch for this, I think I sent that to you. I I just I, I love, do we have the sketch for this one? I think check in the email just in case. Oh, there it is. There, yes. Yeah. So what I did when they asked me to do this, uh, it was a pretty quick turnaround. So I took the poster was done, had been done for a while. The mm. the one that we just looked at, and I just kind of broke down the pieces from the poster and and reformatted it for this box, thinking okay. that all right, I got a good pit portion of the wings done and the, and the head and I did not realize how different the millennium yes dude it it it's definitely pays a lot of homage to this era but it, there are pretty much the whole thing had to be recreated yes that's what's interesting about it. so now you go back to the other uh the actual box art B if you can go back to the other box art yeah so if you watch these films and you're right it is from the millennium which is the, like the third era I would say right there's uh Showa Toho then millennium and then I think the new one's called Reiwa, 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 yeah, with Shin Godzilla and uh, anything from there on. Here's Kyle. He's saying, but technically, dot dot dot. So we're gonna get corrections. Kyle, so please I correct us on anything. Godzilla '85 technically was produced in the Showa era, was but it? it's considered part hey, of say. the. Okay, we're gonna get confirmation on any of that. Uh, Ky I Kyle, you out. Please correct everything. I um, I will, I will defer to him on all. He all is, these he is, yeah, him and AJ got this unlocked so anyway yeah beautiful box now is Thanks. this design indicative of the box shape yes it's that that's a three panel that wraps around three sides. Oh, okay 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 very cool so you can see those pink lines are yes i see them how how different is it for you designing for a box versus a poster i am really interested in designing a toy box art um mondo if you're listening Hector <laughs> and everybody, I would also like to do one. I see Florian gets a lot of them for He-Man. Now Tom <laughs> gets a box art. If there's another box toy to design, I would like it to do it myself, please. Okay, but now go ahead, Tom. You were saying box art versus a print. Yeah, it's uh, once I got the the die, uh, it helped me to lay out exactly how I wanted it to fall. And I had masks like on the on the layers in Illustrator, so I could quickly mask out what the side of the box was going to look like and mm. there was there was issues when i had first laid it out about just where the seams were falling in relation to mothra but mm. uh, and i wanted to keep that egg completely I, I, originally i had it bleeding across the onto the side panels oh, okay but uh then i i wanted to condense it to the completely to the front panel but yeah it, this was pretty straightforward because it was so symmetrical but i can imagine other box uh design problems would kind of rear up with other monsters yeah yeah that makes sense and let me ask you this question the special edition of the statue has the the mothra larva peeking yes. out the egg the regular edition does not 
Did you design two separate boxes, or will yeah. people with the regular edition have to look at this one and just wish? No. Okay. No, it's a different colorway, and oh. I should have said that to you. That's <clears throat> no, okay. Different colorway, and the uh, the larvae are not there. So cool, man. So awesome. Do you ever, th like, it, it's weird because I feel like I'm deathly close to being comfortable that this is part of my life now, that doing this shit, but I need to, every once in a while, remind myself that I kind of get to hang out with the fucking cool kids table, man. I know I've, uh, it does. It is never lost on me. Fucking I crazy, dude. think about that all the time. Like I, when I probably right out of college and, and actually in college and out of college, I was reading uh, G fan magazine, yeah. which is still put out. And I can always remember just seeing like the professional artwork. A lot of times on the cover, there was always like Bob Eggle Eggleton covers and, mm -hmm. and Art Adams was, you know, I don't think he contributed to the magazine, but his stuff was always featured because his Godzilla's so killer his godzilla stuff is on another level dude but just to be able to actually produce official artwork for toho is still like it it, it blows me away it's weird right to like sometimes i just sit down and go dude somewhere there's like people looking at this at toho and deciding whether it's going to be allowed to represent this iconic historic brand and that is crazy dude it's absolutely crazy and i hope i never get numb to that i know i, I know it's no still, it's still, yeah at this point, if it still makes it hits me that way, it's it's gonna stay there. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is? It's like sometimes I get so nervous about what I'm doing. Like, is this gonna be good? Is this gonna be good? I forget to take a, a seat and go, dude. They've trusted you for six of these now. God damn it! I think you can yeah. be yeah, a you little more chill. Relax a little bit. A little Not bit. A little bit. Shout out David Dopko. He is here in the chat. He's another one from collector uh, collect all monsters and a, a real like wealth of knowledge when it comes to this stuff. I would. I would d dare say expert along with Kyle and AJ. So uh, Kyle says the Emperor Heisei era didn't end until recently, technically. Um, Reiwa didn't start until 2019. Isn't that interesting? But it is. It is Showa, Heisei, Millennium, and Current. Okay, there you go. And the question Eric says, is that going to be a print with a statue or just box art? I believe it's just box art, yeah? It's just box art at this point, yeah. But what you can do, Eric, if you like, you can go ahead and flatten that box, okay? And you frame it up, and you get a free Tom Whalen print. There you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, man. I mean, like, this is just badass stuff. Um, super exciting. And, yeah, so it sold out super fast. You were We were talking before the stream. like, wow, I can't believe it sold out so fast. Uh, your stuff sells out, dude. It does. It does. And I, I'm, again, super thankful continuously yeah. for that. But I did not expect the response to this one that it – I, I logged on at one o'clock uh, just to, I always check, you know, just see how it's going. And the, the variants were gone immediately. Yeah. And then the, the regulars were there and I kind of left the site and didn't check back. But the flood of emails after that were just was, insane. They must have sold out very shortly after. And um, it's it's been, I, I, I don't even have enough copies to cover everyone. No, that yeah, of course. Cruel, but I'm, I'm kind of gonna, I'm gonna do it in waves when I get them in. So I'm, I hope to help as many people as I can. Yeah, you know, and and people should know it's like, unfortunately, like these deals are special and you, they are limited and limited legally. Like we can't just, you know, produce yeah. as many as we want as much as we would like to. I think in a perfect world we would love to just keep them going. Why not? But it, there is like legality around it and. And luckily, you know, we get tapped to do these kind of things often. So there's always something else coming down the pike, I would, right, I right. dare say. And if you're a fan of this genre, I think, I can't say anything specific, but the both of us have something cool coming up soon that we won't be able, we won't be able to talk about tonight, but soon, right, Tom? Yes? yes definitely, yeah. yep. So that's very exciting. Okay, g gang, if you have any uh, questions for uh, Tom, feel free to put them in the chat. I don't want to keep you all night, but dude... What else are you uh, like? What what's been going on? Are you getting ready to do cons again? Are you thinking about that? Where are you? Where are you? By the way, You're, are you in Maryland? I don't know what. If I, where I, where no, I, uh, so I just moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That's what is Pennsylvania? It's central Central Pennsylvania. Uh, I am a definite maybe for conventions this year. I I, I have a table with uh, my friend Dave Perillo <laughs> for New York Comic Con, and I I'm I am still right on the tip of that fence Go what what's here. what is your thinking in there because for me it's like i am dying to get to a convention at this point me too. yeah i'm dying to get there i just don't know my comfort level we have we have dialed it back so i know so over this i just don't know my comfort level i'm fully vaccinated me but too yeah i still like to be in a, cr a room of people for like four days i just i don't know what my 
I don't know if, I just don't know if, where I'm at with that. Right I know, now. dude. I'm the same way. It's like, you know, we went, to, Gabby and I went to see a movie recently and um, we were in the movie theater and it was um, a quiet place too. And it felt so good to just be in a movie theater. We hadn't gone the whole you know, pandemic, obviously yeah. I was, yeah. and you know, we've been told by our friends that Gabby and I were the safest people that they knew in terms of taking it seriously. And I'm like, of course I'm taking it goddamn seriously. What? There's no <laughs> spectrum. What's the matter with everybody? Everybody is having, you know, it's Miami and Florida. This it's a little, you know, a little bit of lunacy out here, but Gabby and yeah. I were like super serious about it. We have a bunch of butthurt family and friends, you know, because yeah. we like, you know, shunned them a little bit because they were being frivolous. Yep. And um, I'm like, I don't care, dude. It's, in fact, I'll forgive you later if you don't get this thing and keel over. And exactly. uh, it's right. all good. Don't trust me. I'll, I'll be okay. You, you know. And so the point is that now, though, now I'm like, I, if I'm trust, if I, if I, you know, if I trusted the science to 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 wait for the vaccine, and I got the vaccine. Now I'm like, damn it, I want to go out already so bad. But I'm with you. Like, it's not no. a switch. You don't just flick it on. You know. Yeah. And it's that's a big one for me. And I I love that trip every year. The whole seeing those the, the crowd there and yeah. hanging out with friends that I don't only see once a year yeah. there. But I I just it's it's it, I'm wrestling with it. Yeah. All right. We have a few questions from the chat. So D E S R E F fan says, uh, ask Tom what it's like working with Power Rangers stuff. Yeah, that's true. Because Tom, dude, you every time we go to Target, I, sh I love to point. And Gabby's heard me say it like nine times. <laughs> every time we go to Target, we always go to the toy aisle where those people. And, you know Tom Whalen did that. Like, and I go, hey. Gabby, Tom did that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that fucking cool? I, I know. I, this is what I literally say, Tom. I go, I go. Isn't it fucking cool to say that we know the people who make this kind of shit now? Right. Like that's such a fucking awesome <laughs> feeling. And so yeah, what is that like, dude? Do, that is been such a fun gig um and i i missed power rangers growing up like i was that was like early 90s so i was kind of out of the pop culture scene for a while how old are you tom uh, old are you? that that's a rude uh, that question is, no it's okay how old are you tom uh 47 okay so i'm with you because i was i was already i'm 38 i was already like just on the like we had it in the house my brother was two yeah. years younger than me but i was already on the cusp but you're right you missed it yeah I missed it, so it's fun. Like I have no, uh, I have no nostalgic attachment to it, but it's very fun going back. And I, I did not realize it never stopped. Like, yeah, isn't that crazy? Korea never stopped. So there are so many. Basically, every year there's another season, yeah. whether they change uh, the team or not. Right. But there is such a wealth of uh, character designs, and it, and I love the the selections that they've been picking for toys. Uh, there's, it's just been a lot of fun. Did you rewatch the shows, or watch them? Some of them, but it's just it's overwhelming. I, I couldn't I couldn't watch every episode of every season. I've dipped in on certain ones, but uh, are no. your kids into them? They were oh. when I first started this. My son like plowed through everything on Netflix, but uh, <laughs> they're like locusts. They they go through stuff and then, you know, I can't keep up with what they're on. I, I like I like the the movie that came out recently too because it, I felt like it took it kind of seriously. It gave it a cool story backdrop. I'm like this is a cool way to get some like extra kaiju entertainment, you know, in the mainstream. But it, I don't know. I guess it didn't resonate. I thought it was really good. I didn't hate it either, but yeah. I don't know. It didn't seem like it. Again, I didn't have a nostalgic connection. Right. So I same. Didn't, yeah. I didn't need it to do anything specific. Same. 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 All right. Robert Wilson says, "Is it possible to release any of the Lightning Collection stuff in print form? Slash, are you able to make any sort of Ranger prints?" I would love to, but it's that's completely out of my hands because all that artwork is owned outright by Hasbro. If they ever wanted to do it, I mean, they'd have they have all of the. So what we should do. Yeah, what you're saying essentially, and Robert, you know, consider this. You start a new hashtag, release the Whalen cut, or release the Whalen <laughs> prints. Oh my God, no! And, oh no! And really, just dig in, like, just make it a nightmare for these people to live and wait and sleep and eat and all that without releasing it. Go ahead, yeah. you heard it from Tom. No, I would. Uh, that, I I think there could be some really cool prints yeah. with even just the existing artwork, Me uh, too. just like a mosaic of everything. But uh, it it's totally out of my hands. Yeah. All right, Kaiju Live wants to know, would you ever offer the sketches up as limited releases? I don't know which sketches in particular he's talking about. But, but like I mean, the ones that we showed, like his. Oh, okay. The sketch for the poster. Yeah. I That would probably fall the same as me reprinting the actual poster. Yeah, right. Like, that's that's tricky. licensed material, even though it's not completely finished. If I ever did, if I did a pencil sketch, 
that I ever translated to a poster, I would feel, I know a lot of artists do that. You know, that's like the original that they use to create yeah. the poster and they can sell that on their own. That feels like it's, that's part of the deal. But as far as actually making prints of the sketches, I, I and I also on top of it not being legal, I wouldn't feel comfortable unless it's like a baseball card size that yeah. you could, frame with the actual i don't i really don't want that out there as some as my work because but, people maybe the people that are buying it or understand what it is but mm. i don't want that hanging up that rough draft hanging up and representing what what i can do well you you know what you do tom is you get yourself you know one of the prints and you trace it in pencil and there then you, you go. put out Re like as original sketch engineer a sketch That's it, yeah, exactly right. all right john r price wants to know will there be any additional whaleontology figures released in the future can't wait for the first batch this oh fall. man those figures are so good so Thank good you. in, in fact I yeah gabby if you can on, on the side pull I up i will pull it up yeah. on sideshow they're uh -huh. so good but yeah tom you were saying uh yeah i i would hope so i don't know um i haven't seen any sales numbers i know that a lot of that's based on pre-orders and stuff um but I know I for last I heard they were scheduled for November of this year. So I cannot wait. And I hope once they get out there in the so wild good. that uh, I hope they kind of resonate with people when people actually have them in hand. That's the thing, right? Like, you know, with toys, is this the first time you do a toy release of any kind? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, dude, that's the thing. Like, so with the same thing with the Daruma, it's like I'm excited that there's any pre-orders. Trust me, because I know people know me for the prints and all that. But it's important for me that the people who pre-order them get them in their hands, are happy with them, and then start posting about it. Because yeah, exactly. just like Sideshow and Skybound has the same philosophy here, they're super stoked to carry them, you know. Um, and as people learn about that and find it, go, oh shit, we'll get, we'll go pick those up because that those whaleontology pieces are just great. And the answer to the question is, if you guys dig them, pre-order them because that's how. Side yeah, that's show. how more get made, really. Yes. Like anything, like with anything. Um, 100%. Even you dude. go up to like Super 7 yeah. level toys, like all their pre-orders are the, – the next wave is based on what the what the current wave does. So. And there's a lot I, of like, um, you know, controversy over companies putting out pre-order wave after pre-order wave. And the thing is that they're staggering releases. And, yeah, sometimes – like I'm a Hot Toys fan. Like, Are you a fan of those Hot Toys? I'm a fan. I don't – I only have two or three. But, okay. Uh, I've successfully avoided them up to this point. Good for you. Don't do it. And yeah. so the point is that like you end up with a few pre-orders, trust me, because they announce them and they're like two years out before they release them. Yep. And, um, but the thing is that, you know, it's, it's like, that's how some people have their business plan set up. And if you get these pre-orders and they see like, Oh, there's a lot of pre-orders for this. They might green light something else waiting. For, yeah. Yes, dude. And that is huge for any artist, especially like, in our shoes, like when, when a company like Sideshow or Skybound or whoever sees that, they're like, okay, I, I feel comfortable investing again in the production and pre-production of all these things because it is a risk. And, and dude, yeah. producing toys is expensive, dude. It is super expensive, and there's so much lead up to the mm. actual – like we're, we're, it's in production right now, but there was so many – so much sculpting and painting and design work by me leading up to that, and that was – I think we started that maybe two and a half years ago and they're still, still not completely out yet. So yeah. Isn't that crazy, dude? Like it's, it's and, I, it, okay. that that's one of those things that I, when you, you, you asked about them or the, the person in the chat asked, about yeah. them, that's, that's something that I don't think I haven't thought about in, I don't know, weeks isn't that crazy? As, as excited as I am. It's just, it's always what I'm working on now is yeah. what, what gets my attention. I love it. And I love the idea of like an original Tom Whalen IP. You know, I see those and I love the, you know, thinking about, you know, building story around them. I don't know if you have intentions to do any of that anytime, but it's, they're so inviting as characters. I, I don't because I, uh, the deal I, I cut with Sideshow, they own them. Mm. So they own, uh, the, the designs and any story that would be written around. Oh, okay. them. So, but again, it, it's a, it's a getting my foot in the door. Of and, course. Yeah. You know, let them do the I, work. I, exactly. Yeah, I can fun. I can take ideas down the road and and kind of yeah. hold on to them a little bit tighter. Yeah, these California hippies out there in, oh, in Thousand boy. Oaks. Get, right, get got, off your asses. We got asses. more questions. All right, All right we okay, got okay. I love right, Sideshow. Uh, Odd Creations wants to know for Tom, do you have any shirts to purchase? I do not. I um, 
I did a few shirts through Mondo for, uh, for oh, some yeah. of the of kaiju, but I do not have any on my on my site. Okay, they're on the Mondo site. I, I have the the Hedera one and the Jet Jaguar one, so I yeah. stro- strongly yeah. recommend. Uh, let's see. John G wants to know, Tom, do you have your Alice in Wonderland hung up at your place? And if so, how did you choose to frame it? I still can't decide. <laughs> I don't. I don't have it hung up. But uh, I know some people really have to struggle with with which way to to put that upside down, or, or some, I know some people put it in a clear like frame with glass on both sides. Oh, hung it between rooms so they can see both sides. No Whoa, shit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that yeah. is really pretty rad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Greg Lunzer wants to know, Tom, do you ever sign the prints you put out anymore? I have a Charlie Brown Christmas poster of yours with a very tiny signature of yours down in the corner, but have several other prints with none. This is a thing now. This is a thing. So, okay. The stuff I've been releasing through, I'll gladly sign anything at any show, put it that way. But my, the stuff I sell through Mondo, for them to send... 300 or 400 prints to me to sign and then ship back to them and hope they make it across the country again. I don't sign anything. And I don't think uh, Peter, you can jump in on this, but I don't think any, unless do you sign? Cause you're actually printing them. Yeah. You, the, the ones that I hand print, I do sign, but then we'll do some screen prints, uh, intermittently. And then those, I don't get to see, you know, before right. they go out, but that's, that's a, that's, the nature of the past year and a half. And it's also like the business of printing remotely, but, um, but yeah, so man, like that, go ahead. You were saying the major releases that I do just do not get signed unless they're artist proofs. Um, so it's, and it, it really is a time and, uh, and logistic problem. Cause I, I used to sign those, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas prints that you mentioned. I remember getting those and the company that I did them for, uh, had them shipped to me, and then I, I noticed printing errors on them, and it was it that was such a nightmare to like they wanted me to quality control the printing, and then like bounce certain like it, we wound up bouncing maybe ten percent of the run. It that is just something I have no interest in in dealing with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't and I I don't like handling them and then having to pack them up perfectly. Yeah, and yeah. Across country when it's like a fifty pound stack of paper so no yeah it's a lot dude you know and that's the thing is like it's like part of the the br- the brilliance of be- being able to work with skybound and on my end at least is that that they handle so many of those logistics yeah and that allows me to make more stuff you know um yeah, right right and that's like with mondo it's the same thing it's beautiful like you don't have to do that you know right. but, but like you said if you show up at a show they'll you know You've done MondoCon before. I can't wait to do that convention again. Oh, I've never done it. Never done that. Oh, Every you've never year done it? It comes up. Either I have a conflict or like a heavy travel schedule in the fall. Oh. No, I, I can't wait for it to come up. Are you going to do it next time? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to do definitely. it too. As soon as it's announced. I'm you want to sit next to each other? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, uh, can, okay. So just <laughs> if you're listening. Draw, drink out of the same tiki mug. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, cool. All okay, right. So, so more, we have a couple more questions. Right, cool. Uh, yeah, hmm. Colt wants to know, uh, would you guys ever do a Godzilla piece in each other's style? I would love to see the, uh, <laughs> oh, the collab. <laughs> oh, you That's wouldn't want that. But terrifies me. No, thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll be, I'm not even going to be like diplomatic. No, thank you. Yeah, Colt. I, I mean, I love to be able to be as that skilled and be able to pull it off like that, but I would never be able to pull it off Tom Whalen style, dude. There's just yeah. something there, man. Like, you know what it is? Like, and Tom, did you go to art school in any capacity? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I, uh, went to uh, study graphic design and illustration. Okay, so I went to, you know, I got my bachelor's in fine arts and I studied my master's in art and education and, and I was trained atelier style. So you learn, you know, traditional drawing, traditional painting, oils and traditional sculpture. You learn all the realistic, you know, techniques and all that. And you get to a point where you dip your toe in a little bit of everything and you can become, you know, you can defend yourself in multiple sure. areas. But you get sure. to a point where... You say, this is where I feel like I kick fucking ass in this area. And this is where I can feel most comfortable. And then years go by and you really just live in that world for so long that it's almost like <laughs> if someone said, Tom, you're an artist. Would you like to do a portrait of my son for, you know, it's like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, that's not. I've, that used to be a very uncomfortable yeah. conversation because it used to be, I used to feel like, well, somebody's offering me a job. I have I to know. take it. And I have to like pound this square peg into the round hole. Yeah. And it, it, 
at, I even had a, a client call today that I was, um, I was concerned what they were asking for was not a fit. Even this was like the second call and I, I was concerned and I said, maybe this just isn't a fit. Mm. And we, we kind of ironed out the, the wrinkles in it and we, I think it'll, it's going to work. But, um, I, yeah, I, I kind of studied the same way where I, we were exposed to a lot of different media, mm-hmm. but you feel like when one just keeps hitting more, more frequently than the others. And luckily I was able to um, feel that and, and kind of move in that direction. It's hard, man. It's hard to like that. Those years, I remember being terrified, like, where do I fit? Where do I belong? Where do I, fit? you know, so it's it, awesome when it, you can, huh? It takes a while. Yeah, man. And, uh, but okay. So we have some more questions. Yep. Uh, Tom Thunderhouse design says, Tom, have you had any better luck finding GI Joe's? Can't Hasbro hook you up? My neighbor works there. I can put an arm bar on him. Oh we do not no suggest that. Please don't no, do that. No arm bars in my name at Hasbro, please. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have been uh, on the hunt for a lot of the G.I. Joe stuff, uh, and it's fun to be able to offer up sketches in in trade. Um, There's almost always somebody that's willing to, you know, they had just seen it or grabbed it, and they feel like they're not as attached to it as they would be to a a sketch. So I really appreciate that network that that I can call on when I I need some help. That is one of the perks, right? It really is. It's like a, a... it feels like a superpower yeah, that I right. can yeah. kind of lean on. And I don't feel like I'm cheating anyone. It's like, yeah. I have something yeah. that like, maybe there's only, I'm, I'm guessing at numbers, maybe there's only 10,000 of those figures out there, but I know what I'm, I can, I can make a sketch that's one of one. Right. So, and it, you know, if it takes me an hour, hour and a half and I can give somebody something that they really cherish and they, I get something back that I, it, it feels like a fair trade that, that it's pretty fun to be able to do. Yeah, totally. You know, uh, and Raf asks, can I hook up Tom with some Skybound variant covers? Let me tell you, dude, uh, that's not on me. I would love to see that. And, yeah. um, you know, we've been talking about some stuff behind the scenes that, you know, I'm not ready to talk about publicly yet, but yep. rest assured that there's, you know, there's interest all over the place in, in <laughs> all kinds of uh, shared activities. Huh? Conversations are happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it was up to me, Raf, I would like personally you know the cool thing about being in the situation i'm in is like sometimes i get to like wield power to try to com- get a basically a commission <laughs> like like i want i'll be publicly right now i want to see a tom whalen takaro piece at some point and so i'm going to do what i got to do to see if i can make that happen i don't know if it's going to happen you understand what i'm saying arm, but arm it's some, bars what, apparently arm bars are how it gets done right we're all going to go to pennsylvania <laughs> we're going to walk up to your house most people will just have you sign their prints i'll just you know what i'm saying we're going to arm bar you <laughs> Right, I'm going to smash your G.I. Joe toys. A very important question came in by Levi Cooper, which is, when is Waylon going to do his spin on Takaro? Oh, that's what we just said. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there's interest everywhere. There There it is. That would be a cool print, man. I think that would fit at some point. We got to shout out Kaiju Live for the super chat. Oh, dude, you're so nice. It says vibes. I love it. Uh, let's see. Omnibus Raph wants to know, Tom, any more marker cards and BFF or VS series with Perillo on the horizon? Definitely on all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. I have uh, marker cards ready to go. Here, I'll give you a quick. I'll be right back. Oh. By the way, shout out Tom Dope has left the tab. Oh yeah, Dope Pope's here. What's up, dude? Hey. Omnibuster says we need a Brachionaut and Takro team up. Yeah, I would love it. That would be cool. Yeah. Aster. So oh. he's back. He's back. I'm back. I'm back. Stop talking so shit been, about him. <laughs> my, where's my camera here? Oh, uh, that's good. There you are. There you are. So I've been doing it. these Raptors, uh, and I kind of have a stack of them ready to go. Oh yeah. Nice. I love uh, that color. But it's I've just had a bunch of releases lately, so I'm not. Uh, I just didn't want to like max out everybody. So yeah. Hopefully, the next couple weeks I'll get these out. That's a thing too, right? It's like when you have these things to release, you want to be considerate of people who are collectors, man. It's like. Only a collector would think to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And well, and I, I know like when I do work for different companies, yeah. I always try to get a feel for when stuff's going to come out. Cause I never, I think there was a, a few days where I've had multiple releases from different places and I never want to do that to anyone it, collectors or the companies. Cause it kind of just waters down. Cause there's always, I feel like if using toys as an example, when I'm collecting like if there's a bunch of stuff that comes out on the same day, I always have to make a choice. I know. So I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's funny. So. There's a good question here. Um, what are some, a Philly tune ask, what are some monster posters you've not designed yet, but would like to? Oh, wow. 
I would say I would love to do some Star Wars monsters. Do some Rancor. Oh, and, yeah. um, even the, as as uh, reviled as Attack of the Clones is, some of those uh, arena awesome. creatures, those arena monsters are fun, would be fun. I would love to do a series of mm. just just the monsters from Star Wars. I think they're underrepresented. I feel like I would love, if I was like a very wealthy collector, I would commission all my favorite artists to do a can cantina scene. Yeah, yep. Something cantina scene related. You know, I used to envy going to conventions and seeing those like guys in their you know late fifties, early sixties walking around with portfolios and like, yeah, I got this Sam Keith commission, <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, dude. You know, so like, and they're all like thematically like a whole book. I'm like, you should yeah, publish yeah, yeah. that shit. That's, and then and then they walk up to me and they have, want me to put something in it. I'm like, I don't even I don't even want to hold the book. <laughs> exactly, like, isn't that crazy? Yeah, I that I get so stressed about doing convention sketches. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna carve into their sketchbook next time they show. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stab it. All right, I love that. But uh, yeah, so dude, um, I, I, if there's not any more questions, I want to let you go. I feel like we've held you so long. But before we do, what people are asking, and I and I want to ask this too, is very important. Are you gonna post post more updates on your toy shelf? Look how cool it freaking looks. Yeah, I know. Um, I I'm, I feel like I'm just about there. It's it's a, as I keep telling myself, it's a living, breathing collection. It's never gonna be done. Mm. I feel like I should do a. a I got I got so much response to the those updates I was yeah. posting. I feel like I have to show the final. Um, Dude, when, there's a couple more pieces I'm waiting to to get in here, and maybe I'll do like a live stream. What have you gotten recently? Anything? Uh, well, I'm super pumped about getting that Mothra, uh, oh, cool. yeah. Mondo Mothra. Um, nothing. Do you nothing. do what I do where yeah. like when you know something's coming, you start to strategically brainstorm? Absolutely. Yes, dude. It's so nerdy, Absolutely. dude. Absolutely. I start to clean the shelf like I months before. <laughs> I feel like I should put posts on the shelf like where stuff's going to go. Dude, there's a Facebook group I'm in with for hot toys <laughs> and you know, people use those, um, uh, Detolf Ikea shelves mostly. Yeah. And yeah. so you see them like in every other post that people have them. And uh, and one guy who says, well, since we have so many pre-orders and no releases right now, I figured I'd just like – and he got like a, a post-it note for every figure he has pre-ordered, and he put them all in the shelf with the names on it. It's so <laughs> funny, dude. But, yeah, I ceremony – I have the same thing. Like I'm like, okay, I need to think about – I spend too much time thinking about do I need a new shelf? Do I need to clean a shelf? Do I need to yeah. reposition something? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, and I'm, I have a couple more shelves I want to put up, and I'm waiting for. Uh, I've been waiting for a long time to buy a comic spinner rack. Oh, and dude, there's Gavin. a company that called Spinner Rack that um, uh, Jim Dimonakis, who uh, started um, Emerald City, runs, and I check it literally every day. They've been sold out. They have the the ones that fit the uh, like the graded books now, but oh, it's like the, the 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 pockets are bigger okay. to hold that extra plastic. Is that so what I'm you're waiting gonna do? for their like standard issue one to come back in stock and it's been on back order since like i, I think there's production issues because of covid oh man but, uh, i that is like the final big piece that i need i want one too dude would you be yeah. i'm gonna think I, i'm gonna do what are you gonna put in it i'm just gonna put a lot of old stuff in bags and boards and then have like a new aside for all my new stuff that i can easily um get at whatever i buy that's really like, interesting dude i would love to have it but i wouldn't want to put any bags and boards in it. i wanted to be able to pull it out and look at it Oh, I'll I'll read them. I just um, mm -hmm. that's true. I don't I don't even know if they'll all be bagged and boarded. Don't but put any bags and boards in there, dude. Don't do it. It'll, it'll be a reading back for sure. Yeah, yeah. Only put stuff that you can like manhandle. Right. <laughs> I love it, dude. No, you you know what you do? You you stick it. You fill it with comics, and then you have the CGC grade the entire spinner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just get the whole thing. That's it, encased in amber, and that's it. Yep. I yep. love it. Dude, thank you so much for doing this, man. It's so much fun. I, I love talking to you. You make me so happy to be doing this kind of thing. I can't wait to do a convention and finally get to meet you in person. We never met in person. No, you know, it's crazy. Uh, I don't feel it's going to be any different than this. But No, it'll be better. We'll be drinking out of one drink. Two straws. Exactly. <laughs> Two straws out of one. <laughs> That's it. Mug. That's it. And really long straws. You know how like when you connected straws when you're a kid? Yeah. Yes. And there's like like really, and you can't even suck any liquid out of it anymore. It's too yes. impacted. Yes. And they're leaking, yeah. Everywhere, it's a mess. And we're going to ruin the whole convention. It's going to be a disaster. I love it. All right, I'm going to go over everybody's table and just touch all their prints on the way back to them. <laughs> they're not going to kick me out. All right, dude, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And um, you guys, if you aren't already, which I doubt this is the case, but please, please, please go and follow Tom on all of his social media accounts. Even if you don't use it, set up a Twitter today and just follow him and then close the app. 
delete the Tom, app, but you still follow them. You know what I mean? Tom, so, what's your IG handle so I can throw it in the chat? Strong stuff. Instagram is strong stuff. Twitter is strong stuff, Tom. All right, there you go. It's in the chat for everybody in case you want to follow him on IG and Twitter. Please give him a follow. Check out his stuff. And yeah, Tom, thanks for here for coming. Thanks. Yeah, MondoCon 2022. Exactly. We'll be there. <laughs> All right, Thank buddy. you, Abby. Bye, Tom. Later, dude. All I right. love you. All right. See you guys. Later. Bye. All fun. Right. That was fun. And my camera's off. So fun I central. Hey. I love it. You guys, isn't it cool like when you get to hear from someone whose art you really, really love and they're cool people. I love doing yeah. that, dude. I, I never feel like we've crossed any threshold where I'm no longer a fanboy anymore. I'm such a freaking fanboy. I love geeking out. I see that poster every day in my studio and I go, he's so fucking good, dude. And I always- He's so oh, nice. So cool, yeah. yeah like, I love and it. such a chill dude to talk to. I love it, dude. Yeah, great guy. Okay, now. Um, now we can do merch. Show that you, I'm going to prepare this print. I'm going to do. Oh, that's a, right. We're doing the print. Remember, we have uh, 10, only 10, only 10. That's true. Okay. Um, this is a one of one edition. You know, we did the taco. Dude, this is fucking crazy. We did. Okay. Let's just talk about this. Real right, quick. Let's about be on the, let's be on the up and up. Let's, let's okay. go right to front street okay. and talk about this. That's what the kids say now. I learned so much <laughs> slang from watching YouTube. It's, oh, it's like a fountain no. of youth. All right. All right. Please don't repeat it. Though. Front street. <laughs> Okay. Front Street. Go for it. Um, keeping it a buck is Hold another on, thing your, I heard. Your mic is a little hot. I don't want to. A little hot. Okay. Um, anyway, hot, hot mic. Sorry, Bosco. And so anyway, but um, thank you for that, by the way. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so the ten, the 10 Takaro one of one sold out super, super fast. Thank you for that. Um, there aren't that many of the original Takaro prints out there. Um, now there's 10 more. Each one of them is unique, one of one. And because I've treated the background with different layers of ink and some of them have secret stamps in them, I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, Hammerhead Shark design. Here is a couple of them that I've already printed recently. I think some of you guys may have been here when I printed them. So what I did is I take the paper. I usually just print right on paper directly, and I can do an addition where all of them are you know, unified by the color of the ink and the paper. And so this, what I've done is I've treated the paper with other layers of ink. Sometimes, you know, one solid color. Sometimes I'll do like a split color like this one. If you saw, if you remember the taco row prints, they were really like super out there. Yeah. Um, but man, they went super fast, which I was honored by. And then one of them showed up on eBay for 800 bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it sold for 800 bucks, but it's listed for 800 bucks. And... You know, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I guess if you got one, you were, you're good. But if you guys, I mentioned this on the Facebook group, if, if there's demand for more of the Takaro one of ones, we'll definitely do one at some point. You know, it's just a matter of, uh, finding the space in the calendar to, to be able to prepare the paper. Cause it takes more time, obviously. Um, they have to be, you know, inked and they have to dry on their own, which Did takes like about. Did you ever take pre-orders on something like that? That's what this is? Oh, oh, like an open pre-order edition? Probably not, because it's a lot of, like, in other words, to make um, one of these one-on-ones, it's double time. Yeah. Because when we ink the paper, that paper has to dry so well, like a tortilla chip. Because if not, when you put the new stamp on it, it lifts ink. It's yeah. a mess, dude. No, I've seen, I've seen you go through yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, struggle. Yeah, so, you know, the idea is that it's, um, it's, it's, it's more limited. It's based on time, frankly. But but the good news is, since we own Takaro, like it's not a license that we're borrowing. You know, I can just do ten of you know ten of ten or another ten later, and they'll all still be one of one. So that is really like you know the cool thing about it. It's kind of like using the strength of the medium. I'm gonna open up my uh, art cam here. Okay. Was there anything else we needed to talk to before we go to art? Cam? No, no, no. Did I miss? It? I think I got everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 go to art cam. See if you can pull it up. All right. By the way, I'm over here in art cam world. I think I'm good. Mike's a little low. Mike's low. Well, I'm stepping oh, away no, from no. it. Yeah. There we go. Good. Chips and dip. Okay, let me see. That. It's not quite working yet, but I'll get it to work. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm gonna get the uh, ink ready and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, it's still not working. Turn off the app and turn it back on yeah. again. That usually helps. Turn it on and turn it off again. Yeah, turn it on, turn it off. <laughs> turn it on. By the way, oh, this is what we got to talk about. Gabby got tattooed today. 
Oh, I did. You guys want to see Gabby's new tattoo? Throw a two in the chat for a tattoo. So put a number two in the chat if you want to see Gabby's tattoo. Put a single drop of blood in the chat. <laughs> put an F in the chat to pay your respects for my arm because that shit's wiling out right now. There you go. Yeah. Now you're in. But still, show them your tattoo. Okay, well, I'm not going to show you in real life because it's wrapped no, 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 up. You have like it in a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have it in a thing. Hold on. Let me go to the browser scenes. I'll pull it up. From the there it is. Yeah, right now it looks like... Um, it looks like ground meat. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's just really swollen and gross, but hold on. All right, there you go. Look at that. So pretty. I'm nope. like, I was dying for like a very cottage core esque um, tattoo. So I told my friend who um, has been tattooing Shout for- Shout out Puka. Puka, who's been tattooing for many, many years. And she's done many of my tattoos. I go, you know, I think I'm finally ready to take the plunge and tattoo one of my, ar my upper arms. I have my lower arms tattooed, but um, putting it up on my shoulder is like kind of a flex. Like <laughs> you can't hide that anymore. Um, I mean, I guess you can with a sweater, but for me, it was very much a big step and, um, man, she nailed it and I'm super happy with it. Also, it was a very easy tattoo. So if you ever want to get the top of your arm tattooed, <laughs> fear not. It is very easy tattoo to get. So yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. Puka, you know, has been a friend of ours for a long time mm -hmm. and she owns her own tattoo studio now here in Miami um, called Great Oak Tattoo. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you're in the South Florida area or if you ever want to drive down, because she does incredible like botanical, that's her most, that's, that's her big thing. That's really her specialty is yeah. botanicals. Yeah. Uh, check her out on Instagram at, it's just Puka, right? She Puka. has just Puka. Good for her. Mm -hmm. It's nice when people yeah, get Yeah, she just name. opened the shop. Um, Recently, I want to say like two or three months and ago. And the shop is like nothing like a tattoo shop. No, it looks like a spa. It looks like a spa. Like it's so <laughs> nice and it's, chill. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a cottage spa. Like it's very much about green plants and soft music and beautiful imagery everywhere. It's, it's not like the hardcore. Was it the best tattoo experience you ever had? Cause it's your first time getting tattooed there. Like chill vibes. Um, I, the, I don't. I don't, I can't qualify it that way. I definitely felt great there because everyone's so nice, yeah. but also I've, every time I get tattooed with her, I have the best time because oh, she's okay. like a sister. Ah. I've known her for so long and we're so close that um, we always have a great time when we're together and, and we're basically talking the entire time that we're working. <laughs> and she's done a lot of my larger tattoos. So I've sat with her for many hours under the needle. Yeah. And um, we always have a great time. We're laughing the whole time and listening to the Elder Scrolls soundtrack or 70s throwback, <laughs> throwback <laughs> playlist. And, you know, but yeah, um, I, I definitely suggest that if you're down in South Florida and you want to get tattooed, something botanical, that you check her out. Her, her whole books, studio is good. She's got like a bunch of people everybody, doing yeah, cool different styles. Everybody there. Everybody there is incredible. But um, books do fill up very quickly at that shop. So yeah, I'm gonna go. To I'm gonna go get some filler designs done. It's true. Cause I'm not gonna get like a botanical. It's not really the style that I get tattooed. But I'm gonna get some little nerdy icons like some Ultraman or Star Wars things as filler on my arm. I'm thinking about live streaming it. Oh, you should. That'd be fun. She'd hate it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be so pissed. No, I'm gonna, you know, it'd be awesome to, or at least just wear the GoPro headset the whole time. <gasps> and then she would be so angry. Oh my god, yeah, my no, dear. no one annoys her more than Peter. Yeah, like I know her they're, number. They are also very close friends, so take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, but yeah. like, Peter really knows how to push how to button. push those buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I asked her to be on the show, by the way. Oh, did she want to do it? She she seemed very flattered, and she wondered if anybody would even care to hear her talk. And I said, why wouldn't they? Would you? Yeah, maybe, especially if she's doing a tattoo. I mean, oh, I think it's she has a very interesting story. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and also being able, like, even if we just had some footage in the background that she pre-filmed or something. She has a yeah. lot. Okay. Yeah, but she's um, she's got a very interesting story about making her way through the industry as a female artist. Yeah. And with somebody that had a very good background in art already, because she true. didn't learn on the job. She, no, no. she went to school for art. Um, and, you know, and being a female business owner, I think is something that is, I love hearing her talk about it because it's, it's a big move to start your own shop. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to meet her and hear her talk about her past in art and she's a super geek like all of us, she's yeah. into all this crap. So it's a fun it would be a really fun conversation. I've been trying to uh, 
work it out to get some more tattoo artists on the stream. So that would be a cool thing. It would be a cool way to start. All right. Yeah. I'm going to print this one of one. And then you want to see if Paul has the link ready? Uh, yes, absolutely. He put the link already, but you should test it. I think, yeah. Tell him about to activate it. Just I will, to... I will test it, yeah. Okay. And if you guys remember how this works, like, we're going to, I'm going to make 10 different prints using this shark design. Right. Each one will be signed, stamped, and numbered one of one, one of one, meaning there's only one in this, you know, uh, combination. So in this case, I have this. I saw a lot of people asking for like blueprints, blue, do some blue stuff, blue shark. Blue. So I have this piece of uh, aqua green paper, which I rarely get. It's hard to, to track this stuff down. And so I've kind of like treated it with like this, these, uh, this d design pattern of like a darker aqua ink. And now I'm going to print it like in a little bit of an aqua blue mix. So you can kind of see um, over there, the ink color I was using, I mixed it up. Don't ruin it. Okay, so now I'm gonna print it on this and this will be the only one printed in this particular style. Let me get this out. So, you know, it'll be randomly sent to anybody who wow, pre-orders one. That ink smells so bizarre. I'm using a mix of two different inks, that's why. Cause I blend it in a color that's not out of straight out, out the jar. Right. Can you check it's on next to Java? Yeah. The the heavy brayer, so sure. I can put the pressure on this. Yeah. So this is fun. Um, we're gonna put the uh, link in the chat right after I print once it. it huh? Once yeah. Once it goes live. Thank you. <laughs> and again, like if you guys are like you like into collecting. Limited stuff, you know, exclusive stuff. There are some f folks who only collect like one of one things, original, you know, things that aren't uh, made into prints. This is a kind of a cool way to scratch that itch at, uh, you know, and, and, and get some of my artwork. You know, that's, it's, you know, the reality is it's harder to get some of my artwork lately. It's been selling out. And so, this is a cool way to like get something that nobody else will have. I'm ready with the link. Hold on, don't put it. You in. Want me to put it up no, yet? No, 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 no. Yet. Let's, re let's do this reveal All first. Right. And I can't believe how strongly that stuff smells. <laughs> it's like a totally different smell from the the black one. The, yeah, the different colors have different smells because yeah. because they're made with different. With different uh, uh, chemicals i guess well different um different Additives, substances whatever. to make <laughs> the color yeah right, okay right. here we go let me see it's pulling really nicely yeah, it's a, good, a little yeah. sticky but it's pulling it's cold in here let me see all right there you go move your glasses out of the way i <laughs> put it on the shark Ooh. Barely any ever Gentle. do anything in this color, so this Gentle. is cool. Gentle. This is a cool one. That is cool. Blue yeah. on blue. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I might do a couple more in this color, like variant, because people really dig it. But I think it came out nice, dude. Are you gonna do other colorways for this one? Yeah. So every one I'll do a little bit differently. Some I'll do some in black, some in blue. Do some in red. I might do some in red. Red would be awesome. But each one will be a one of one. Okay, so let's go ahead and put... <laughs> Ryan so, says blue smells like Smurf. Yeah. Eh, ground Smurf. <laughs> oh, uh, Geo139 has a question. Wants to know, what will the pricing be for the one ones? These are going to be 100. Okay. So I think we can put them in the, ch in the chat. Yeah. Pop Check if it works. Make sure it's on a 404. Yeah, no, it's live. All right, go for it. Drop it in. All right, guys, yes. I'm going to drop this link in just a second here. I'll count it down. If it sells out, you guys aren't. If if you're not, if it doesn't sell out, we'll put it up tomorrow and, and offer it to some other people. But if it does sell out, don't worry. If you didn't get one, like we will do more one of ones in the future, which is the cool thing about this. We can do more. All right, here we go. Count a couple of seconds and put it up there. Boom. There you go, everybody. I pinned it as well, so you should be able to see it at the top of the chat. Easy to get to. And good luck, everyone. Thanks so much, guys. If you Thank if you're you. able to get one, appreciate it. And uh, again, if, if, if it sells out, I'm going to go to the browser scene so everybody can see it anyway. 
shop. Yeah, there's one of them. So that's one of them. But like, again, that I mean, that's a sample image. That's one of the ten. So everybody will get a different one. Mm -hmm. It's know. a twenty by fifteen print. Um, ships August twelfth. Oh. Yeah, it says it there. Looks like we'll be able so to. You've, you're on the calendar. Already. Hey, thank you, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Um, so yeah, it, it's a fun one and it's one of those designs that I'm going to try to work into the Takuro universe. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I'm not stamping it with the orange T just yet because I have to make sure I can work it in. But oh, that's interesting. Yeah, He's I, I, not officially part of the Takuro. Fish. Only. Did you want him to be? Like, was that originally the intention for this guy? Yeah, yeah. It, I thought it would be cool to like have this, you know, big sentient or big like intelligent shark. Okay. Um... That maybe he's not a bad guy. <laughs> maybe he's not like violent <laughs> as he looks. But it's something that like it might pop up later. I just can't confirm yeah. it just yet. So I'm it's not fine. officially saying. Why don't you show uh, the print next to you right now? Like oh, pull up precise. that. But yeah. Just so people get an okay, idea. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah. It's, it's, um, oh shit, sorry. 20 by 15. 20 right. tall, 15 wide. And then the image is like around 18 by 12 in the middle. Yeah. But, All uh, right, they're sold out. Thank you so much, guys, everybody. Thank you. Throw a plus one in the chat if you were able to grab one. We'd love to congratulate you and thank you. And don't worry, like I said, um, look, the truth is when we sell out of a Godzilla or Alien APs, it's pretty much done. Yeah. It's done. Like, unless some miracle deal change happens, it's yeah. done. Because but, of licensing and everything. Yes, but with these, we can bring them back, to, you know, over time. Yes. Like, we can have another Takura one of one print party. Right. I haven't even, dude, think about this, you guys. First of all, I have to tell you, I don't know when the next official stream is, if we're doing it next week or not, but mm. I'll, I'll find that out and let you know. Don't fucking miss Expo this time. I'm telling you. Oh, for real. I'm telling you, if you're into what we're doing, if you've liked some of the crazy shit we've done recently, especially at Expo, if you thought the Ultra Mega release was cool. I know. You don't even know, dude. You have to, you just cannot sleep on the Expo I wish, this time. I wish do I could share it. Yeah, it. I wish. I'll tell you this. When I got confirmation of, this is a real story. When I got confirmation of one of the things that we're going to release at Expo, it was like, because you remember Skybound's on the, on the West Coast and I'm on the East Coast. It was like th two in the morning. And for some reason, I woke up with the alert on my phone. And I saw it and I'm like, holy shit. And I really had no one to tell because it was two in the morning. Everyone was sleeping. And I was like, I got to tell somebody. I got to tell someone. I couldn't tell. <laughs> I usually always tell Gabby. You told me. Yeah, but you were sleeping. I usually oh, tell. Oh, you told me later. Yeah, on when you woke you up. You needed to tell somebody. Yes, right in that then moment. And there. Yes. <laughs> so I usually either text my brother or Gabby. Everyone's you know, asleep. And everybody's asleep at <laughs> that moment. So I'm not going to text. But I had to sit with this crazy secret yeah. for hours and it was killing me and then getting back to sleep it was it was, yeah, it was difficult impossible. oh good Let's question geo at, says oh. what's expo oh, so yeah, that is, yeah. uh, no it's not, not a noob question don't worry dude it's kind of a new thing even itself it during uh the last year when we couldn't do conventions skybound started something called the skybound expo spelled xpo because it was skybound's 10th anniversary x and expo but now we just use the name skybound expo and we've done like a halloween themed one uh -huh. we did a video game themed one and we have one coming up uh in july i believe it's 17th 18th so it's like saturday sunday or friday I'm saturday looking up the date i don't think right they put now. it out yet i don't think they no. have wow no that's top secret news right here uh -huh. breaking here but oh. the point is it's gonna be a two-day thing and i'm telling you holy schmagolians I don't say Schmagolians <laughs> Not easily. lightly. Not lightly. <laughs> That's a word I don't use lightly. For real. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a whacked, crazy situation. I can't believe it. Something super exciting, super fun. Something that I had to sit and just sit internalize. With. You because had to sit with it. I'll talk about it that day, like how, why it's special. But right. it was nuts. And then there's another thing wait I, I want to congratulate the people who got one. Oh, thanks guys raf got one hey raf thank you raf, john f thank always. you uh, todd thank todd you i got one chris weber the chris one. weber of the, the golden state warriors the thank chris you chris weber uh who else got one i think that's it for now but thank yeah you guys so much thank man. You i appreciate guys. it yeah. um uh, but yeah it's it's crazy and then um it's a fun by the way it's a fun show like they have it's like they a, have so much content. Yeah, they have all day long. They'll do it's video crazy. game stuff. They do schmodown stuff, which if you're not uh, 
uh, following, well, you have subscribe to Schmodown. It's so ridiculous. And, uh, it's so and good. They have a bunch of new shows they just announced, so they're doing all kinds of great stuff on their channels. Christian Harloff is one of the best creators in our industry of oh, like yeah. pop culture, fun stuff. I, I don't know about you guys. I love podcasts. I love listening to my work. YouTube's uh, podcast. I love it. And Christian, Christian is, I was a fan of what they were doing like back at Collider and now on his own thing at SEN, now with Skybound. It was so awesome um, when I found out he was at Skybound when I got picked up um, to be able to be there with him. He's a, and he's a really nice guy, which again, when that happens, it's the best. Um, and then, um, yeah, they do awesome stuff with comics, Comics Vault Live, which is uh, Sean Kirkham, a.k.a. Big Clutch. They drop insane CGC stuff, rare variant things, exclusive things, mystery box, really great stuff. And it's just like directly there. You can, yeah. they drop the links just like we do. And then interviews with different creators and comics and artists. And uh, Robert Kirkman usually stops by for something, which is awesome. Um, just rad. It's like, just great. Yeah. Just fun. It's, yeah. it's a fun day. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so there's that. And there's one thing. <sighs> There's going to be, let me see how I say this without ruining a surprise. Okay. There's, think about it very carefully. Yes. Okay, let me think. <laughs> let me think. Let me think into the it. microphone here real quick. Oh, God, I'm thinking. <laughs> that was super awkward. ASMR thinking. No, that's gross. Just okay. say what it is. Uh, what I was say is, <laughs> um, there is going to be the first appearance of a very important character in the Takaro universe on that day. <gasps> the first appearance, so a character you don't know about, although I have teased elements of this print in the Facebook group and on my Instagram. I've teased. Oh, you did? Yeah. So That's remember, right. oh, where is this? Right here. It's on your Instagram. You guys remember when we designed this little guy together, this little this alien race? Mm -hmm. Well, I incorporated the smaller version. Remember, we had like the smaller ones and the bigger ones. That's right. I incorporated the smaller ones into the next print, like I said I would, like I said I would, and they are not the star of the piece. They are not. The star of the piece is a first appearance of a major, major character, potentially the main villain. Of the Takuro universe as the story is currently being written. And it is going to release the same way you like collect a comic and the comic it will say, oh, first appearance of Mysterio in this issue of Amazing Spider Man. First appearance of Hobgoblin is issue number 60 of Amazing Spider Man. I think that's the right number too. Yeah. You know, you know that, right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh I just like agreeing with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so make you think, that's my favorite thing about you. Know? That's my favorite thing that you do. That I just agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I fucking love it. I should go, oh, fuck. <laughs> but <laughs> but it will be in our world that we're building leading up to like publishing a story and a universe and all that. This will be the first appearance of th the main villain. And I'm dropping that at Expo. And I'm so stoked for you to see it because it's kind of a different piece for me. Mm -hmm. um, compositionally, it's got... You know, it's not a giant kaiju. Nope. It's not a giant monster. Nope. So that's going to be different. But this character is definitely villainous. Yes. So um, oh if you're God, collecting, you if you're collecting and you're and you believe in the story, you believe in the world, and you know we're going to turn this thing out, this will be one of those pieces to have. Like, like people like the number one Takaro print, the OG Takaro print. This will be the OG blank print. So that's all I can say at this point. You don't want to miss this one. It's going to be fun. Way. Okay, you guys. I think we're going to wrap it up. We, we did a long show. So. We did a very satisfying show. anything that we're missing on the chat? Um, Let's see. Nick's mix. Hey, man. Feel free like to text me. ASMR. Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> exactly. Time to move to Twitch. You got it. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, you do. How, do you, how are you doing, Miss? Oh, Nikki. That's one oh, of my students. Hey, hey Nikki. Nikki. I hope you're having a good summer, too. Yes. And, uh, you're having a great summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see. Oh, intrigue. Todd Reimer says wanton attacks. Wanton attacks, the one real day. villain. One day. Potentially. See, uh, Question, not for one of ones. 
Todd from Todd. Yeah. Have you ever thought about hiring an apprentice or outsourcing the actual printing to free yourself up and potentially allow you to do larger edition sizes? Dude, Todd. Already you know doing it. We're doing it, man. And like Andrea at Andeas um, on Instagram. I've, I've re- she's I've been shared- in the chat with us before, Yeah, too. she's been in the chat. I've shared her stuff. She was just here a little while ago. I told yeah. her to stay for the stream, but she had to go. She is helping me from time to time. She prints editions of things. Like she just uh, finished printing the first surprise for Expo, so you don't know. I can't tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> and she is a, tomorrow. She's gonna finish the edition of Gola Kiri prints yeah. because I need to work on the carvings for the things for Expo. So, yeah, dude. In fact, um, and we and you know we pay her for that work. It's not like just a an internship for no, experience. Not at all. No, she gets paid for yeah, her work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so, like, we've you know try to work that into pricing and and make sure that you know. Cause everything like eats into like the business. So we, you know, this is like business talk. Oh, she's in the chat. Oh, Andy's what up? <laughs> hey, there she is. Andy is Andrea drop, um, your Instagram handle. I think it's just your username, but it everybody. Is, yeah. And, oh yeah, she's a fucking awesome artist in her own right. Of course. And I think her stuff is at a fucking steal price right now. Cause they're handmade original block prints. That you, the same stuff you like that I do, she's doing them. She's, you know, out. Th- she's a rebel. She's out there in, in the no man's land being able to work free of licenses. She takes commissions. She does. She sells hand carved stamps, like little I know, stamps. It's insane. Her hand carved stamps, like, they fuck me up, man. And I've been trying <laughs> to tell so her. Good. <laughs> I'll tell you guys right now so you can, like, tell, tell me and tell her what you think. I, uh, I, I, I've been telling her it would be awesome to see because her style is kind of like a cute style. You know, yeah, but like, it still retains a lot of the, like, kind of rough, yes. almost like masculine energy of lino cuts. Like, it's not super feminine, but still really cute and still reminiscent. Yeah, it's of, a like, good the, balance of like yeah. something that's cute and yes. cool and kick ass. Yes. Anyway, like she did an awesome cantina band. Her stuff sells out too, and and you know, mm-hmm. but I've been trying to convince her. I think she might do it to do like a series of, like the like like slave one. Oh, yeah. Land, like 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 the ships yeah like slave one sh- parked and then like a little boba fett next to it but the boba fett would be tiny the same size as an action figure like from the old school kenner figures that would be so cool so that you could display your figure if you have one right oh, in front of the so right using it as a background yeah 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 it yourself. would be good by itself like you don't it, like the figure is it will still be there the right, character's right, there right, but I if you it. put it right in front it'll be in scale like 12 scale and then do the same thing with like um, the Razor Crest. These are things that I would do if I had the yeah. Star Wars license. I can't do those unlicensed things anymore that people uh, are watching what right. I'm doing. But Andrea can do it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, by the way, we had an important question in the chat. Go ahead. Is um, can you see the prints uh, for Expo online? Because some people aren't uh, familiar with how Expo works. Mm-hmm. It's all digital. So oh yes, yeah, sorry. It's not. You don't have to be in person. No. It's literally all done through YouTube, I believe. Right? They host it on YouTube. Yeah, we do it on YouTube on the Skybound channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it would be a good idea to subscribe to Skybound's YouTube channel. And we kind of do it the same way we do it here, where like we announce something and then you have y- the shop and then tab the link, open. Right, the link will go live and then you'll order it just like the, we did today. Yeah, in the Skybound store. So, like, yes. get familiar with the Skybound store, um, subscribe to their YouTube channel. I'll be posting the heck out of it, you know, on my channels and everything. But um, so if you're not like subscribed on any of my socials, make sure you are. I'm sure you are if right. you're here, but just in case. And, uh, and yeah, so. And it will be a limited edition. Yeah, they'll be limited, numbered, you know, the whole deal. And this print will have the Takaro in universe T stamp on it. Yeah, like it's a it's an official. It's officialized. Official Takaverse. All right, you guys. Right, I think that's everything for today. I love doing streams. I love seeing all of you. Thank you for hanging, I man. Know, we and always have so much fun on this. Yeah, this is awesome. I love that, t- that uh, Tom came on with us. You, If you haven't seen Tom talk before, by the way, if you want to hear Tom and I talk a lot more, Early on in the pandemic last year, he sat down for like an hour with me and we did a whole right. conversation. One of the early. Yeah. The early and um, and uh, the thumbnail is really funny for it, by the way. If you see it, you'll see it's funny. He did a, <laughs> has a funny picture on it. But it talks about like we talked about his whole background, like the stuff he did leading up to his career, how he got started, all that good stuff. He's so good. Good. He's just such a good dude. And uh, go show him some love, you know, if, if you are familiar with his work. I love him. By the way, they're asking... That you please 
please sanction and allow mm. that Andrea do a taquito print. Oh. Mm. Huh. I'm not saying no. I mean, look. We're go- she can do whatever she wants. We're negotiations, Andrea. She's doing fan art. Negotiate the shit out of this. Just, do, just go do some fan art. That's true. You I'm can do whatever not, you I want. Didn't, I don't know. Oh. I don't know what she's up to. Don't get the lawyers involved. Just fucking do whatever. Sorry, yeah. Just do whatever you want. Who cares? All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, thank you so yeah. much. I'll post later what we're doing next week. I don't know if we're going live next week or not. We might start going we'll to see. our every other week schedule soon. I'll let you know. But more crazy shit is on the way. Yes. I love you guys. Thank All you. All right, guys. We thank love you. you. We'll see you soon. Summer stream. <laughs> Summer stream. Oh, 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 oh. Summer of dreams. Put the luau music to go out. Oh, shit. Hold on. Wait. Hold oh, on. The Hawaii music. Oh, why do you got to ruin this? My whole vibe. Over here. Crank that shit. It has been cranked. I wish I had a luau thing now, too. Luau thing. No one can see you. Everybody, everybody have a grass chair. Your camera oh. died. <laughs> Perfect timing. And I'm out of here. Keep it <laughs> All right, bye, guys. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>